the fair winds blow Our home is where the waters flow We'll show you what we've come to know On board while sailing wisdom Once again, but we're oddly going south, and the reason is there's actually a bridge closure up north that uh, has no news as to when it's going to open in the near future. So we're going to have to go outside for about 10 miles. In order to go outside, we need to get down to the inlet. We're just going to anchor outside that inlet uh, so that first thing tomorrow we can head outside and hopefully get back into the Savannah Inlet without any problems. Yes, these waves are tiny, but for the ICW, they're pretty big. Uh, they're maybe a foot tall, but it's so cool. You got a really strong current coming out and a really strong wind coming in, so you got wind over time. Charles. relatively painless 10 miles. Our only complaint was that Charlie, Miss Charlie here is um, experiencing her hormonal time, so she just will not shut up. But uh, other than that, we had a fine passage and we're totally ready here at the mouth to go out into the ocean tomorrow. It's been a long time since we had sail out, like significant amounts of sail out, and I'm just really excited to actually sail tomorrow. We ran 10 miles. We're just running the generator to have full batteries when we shove off offshore to make it to Savannah, because we need charge if we get wrong on the tide coming into the inlet. So I'm gonna take Morty to shore and we'll be ready for tomorrow. tomatoes and burrata and kale salad for dinner. And Jerry is eating... Lemon. Straight lemon? Straight up lemon. Lovely. <laughs> that is what Jerry does. Plop. Okay Jerry, time for bed. Here comes Jerry. Step up Jerry. Good Jerry. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Good night, Jerry. Good night, Charlie. Love you. This is dressing that I made with the yogurt that Herbie made. <laughs> bon appetit. It's, it's pitch black. It's before dawn. I got the anchor up. It's actually 5 a.m. to be exact. We have the anchor up. The current is still flowing out the river. So we're going to go out with the outgoing tide. And then when we get to the inlet, it should be nautical dawn, which is, uh, or nautical twilight. So the sun's almost up over the horizon. It's about six degrees below the horizon, which means that you can't physically see the sun, but there is enough light, in my opinion, to see things. We got two miles to go to get to the inlet and we'll get there pretty much at slack water, at slack low water. So if we bump anything, it's just wait some time and the six foot tide will lift us back up and uh, we can see to get out of the inlet. It feels so amazing to be out here again. We've been in the ICW, which, which has been peaceful and nice, but man, I've missed the ocean. And just, Ah, just seeing the dawn coming up over the horizon, it's just, it reminds me so much of finishing my night watch and then, you know, I get to go to bed and Maddie takes the first day watch. But, you know, right now I just woke up, so I'm well rested, so this looks even prettier.
appointment. I was so excited to come out here and do some ocean sailing and relive our glory moments. And the first thing I did was throw up and I just never got better. I mean, it was really disappointing. I didn't get to enjoy it at all. Right now is wonderful. As we come into the inlet, we've got following seas and we're actually sailing and everything is beautiful, but I spent the majority of today's glorious ocean sail curled up in a ball. It's really sad. going tide to the inlet and then at the inlet when we get there hopefully we time it properly and then the tide should shift and pull us right back up the Savannah River. Okay the fog is it's not too dense but it's pretty bad. Visibility is about 0.3 miles which we can stop in that speed because, or we can stop in that distance because we're only going two knots because that's the safe speed for these conditions. But we don't have a bell, so instead I'm going to be using pots. These two pots, and I'm going to clank them together at an interval of one clank every two minutes, and that'll be our fog signaling device. And if we hear someone else clank back, well, gotta keep our ears peeled. That's what we gotta do. That and also AIS, and we're gonna be traveling through very, very well-marked channels that's also very deep outside the channel. So, it's all good. Just take it slow, take it easy, make sure that we can always stop in our distance or correct course and avoid a collision. So, I'm really, really hoping that as the sun comes out, the fog burns off, and by that time we'll be further inland where I'm hoping there's less fog. Well, I've been watching over the pets this morning, Charlie, Jerry, and Morty and uh, Herbie's gotten us going nicely. The fog is lifting already, which is great. The morning is progressing nicely, and we are just trying to sa seek a safe anchorage for all these storms that are coming.
now we get to see Defusky, which is actually awesome for two reasons. One, it's an island that the only access to is by boat, so everyone drives around on golf carts. And the second thing that's super awesome about it is Defusky is in South Carolina. So we have now crossed from Georgia to South Carolina. We are making our way up the coast and we're in a new state. cool because uh, this marks our first stop in South Carolina and uh, we're at Defusky Island which is apparently a really cool island and the best part is that we have a friend who has a little cabin on the island and he's going to lend us his golf cart Southern fried chicken here. It's delicious. Mm. Ah, well worth the wait. We just had a delicious lunch at Crab Co. or Crab It's Shack. the only place. Yeah, the only place. <laughs> and uh, now we're gonna go explore Defusky a little bit more. We have a beach to see. Apparently it's very pretty. Yes. And it's just a, it's a very unique island because there are no cars and how many residents? 400. 400 residents on this island uh, nope. and there's no way to get to it. There are no bridges. Yeah, it's only by boat. So people take the ferry here from Hilton Head or they catch Sail a boat. Sail on their yeah. own. Yeah, so uh, it's, it's a really neat experience. Yeah. Come now, along with us to see the rest. Now one thing that I'm sadly really excited for, apparently there's a tree that the ground is washed out from under it and there's about five feet of roots exposed in the air and I'm I'm actually oddly excited to go see that tree. So. <laughs> Let's go see it. <laughs> walk along the beach. Jerry insists on being at the tip of my finger. <laughs> oh, awesome on this side. Okay, this tree is really cool to me for a very weird reason. So I grow bonsai trees and there's a style where you literally plant the tree and over a lot of time, you go putting new dirt at the bottom of the pot and you go eroding the dirt away at the top of the pot and the roots will grow down and you'll get a tree that's standing up like this. Hey Charles, stay down here. And here it is, like it happened in nature. The tree died at a long time ago, but like still, it's cool, like it happened on this beach. Well, the fog is back, so we are going to make our way back to the boat as quickly as we can, even though we're in a slow golf cart and then a slow dinghy. We 
raced across the island faster than the fog did. The crazy thing, it's getting cold and I looked on the forecast and it's supposed to go down to 32 tonight. Well, the storm has arrived. I'm really glad we are where we are. We're in a very protected area. Although that... All right, we're getting tortured here. It's blowing about 40 knots. Thanks for watching this episode of Sailing Wisdom. Don't forget to like the video, share it with your friends, and hit subscribe so you don't miss the next Rigging Doctor episode. And if you're interested in even more Ringing Doctor awesomeness, consider becoming a patron to see all of our extras. Can't wait to see you next time as you join us out here on the high seas.